Hello, I'm Yanash Radinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them, and tell you all you need to know. Comrade Tsar, also known as Bunker Grandpa, Vladimir Putin himself, has apparently left his basement. But he had a solid reason. His presidential inauguration for the 10th or 20th term, I mean, who keeps score anyway? A brief reminder, if you forgot, back in March, what passes for presidential elections was held in Russia, offering the Tsar's subjects one more opportunity to show their love for the ruler. And today, in return, they could watch him take his imperial throne again, but only on TV, of course. The coronation of the British monarch is supposed to pale in comparison to all this. But as always, there is something just a bit rotten beneath all that gold and glitter, the gleaming splendor designed to make us forget about the human costs of Putin's reign. Полк! Верно! Для встречи с фронта на крат! Пулк! Army officers with hats like satellite dishes and Steven Zigal. All the classics were there, in other words. After a ceremony featuring soldiers dressed as ballet dancers, the enlightened Tsar met up with KGB agent Vladimir Gundyaev, also known as Patriarch Kirill, to pray together. Everyone seemed to be waiting for a sign from the heavens, like a thunderclap finally bringing justice, but alas, nothing like that happened. Apparently, the capital C creator has endless patience. Итак, на ваших экранах патриарх московский всей Руси. Невероятно красивое внутреннее убранство. Итак, благодарственный молебен. Before Comrade Tsar was inaugurated, he ordered the ambassadors of the United Kingdom and France scolded. There was no doubt as to the fact that the whole show was a pre-coronation ritual. Officially, British Ambassador Nigel Casey was summoned to hear Russia's official protests at the words of Foreign Minister David Cameron, who said that Ukraine has the right to use UK-supplied arms to attack Russian soil. What insolence! Attack Russia! It's actually Russia who does the attacking, and the world would do well to remember that, by the way. Anyway, post stamps commemorating Vladimir Putin's inauguration have been made available at the main post office in Moscow. The staff say that buyers began lining up already at 8 a.m., as soon as the office opened, and 120 stamps were sold in one hour. That doesn't exactly make it a bestseller, but the stamp being available is what makes Bunker Grandpa feel good. Flattery is no longer sufficient for his brown nosers, apparently. Anyway, stamps are so last century, don't you think? Putin Fortnite skins, anyone? How about that? Preferably riding a bear shirtless. A big chunky model, huge hitbox, literally hard to miss. You're welcome. By the way, I should totally apply for copyright protection for that idea with Putin Fortnite skins. Anyway, moving on. Being a traitor and an agent of a foreign power is one thing, but doing that while being an idiot is something else entirely. Polish judge Tomasz Schmidt has fled Poland for Belarus, where he asked Lukashenko for political asylum. In a press statement, Schmidt said that his action is a protest against the course taken by the Polish government, which, encouraged by the US and the UK, is leading the country into war. He also argued that Warsaw should be pursuing more neighborly relations with both Russia and Belarus. 
What a move. To say that Poland is authoritarian only to flee to Belarus, the shining beacon of democracy. Right. In return for his services, Schmidt was granted an audience with none other than red nose holder extraordinaire Solovyov himself. Alas, we don't have any footage from that momentous interview, apparently because Solovyov's questions went by with no reply due to a technical glitch. But we do have another clip to show you in its place. Dzień dobry państwu. Dobry dzień, gospoda. Chciałbym się zwrócić do władz Białorusi. Ja bym chciał obracić się do białoruskim władzom. Do Ministerstwa Spraw Zagranicznych. Ministerstwo Inostranych Dział. Białorusi. Białorusi. Z prośbą. Z prośbą. O umożliwienie. Żeby przedostawili mnie możliwość. Przekazania dokumentu o zrzeczeniu się stanowiska sędziego. Przekazać dokumenty z zajawienia o podstawie z dołożności sędzi. Rzeczpospolitej Polskiej. Rzeczpospolitej Polskiej. Poprzez ambasadę Polską w Mińsku. Через польское посольство в Минске. Зрешение се становиска. Отказ от моей должности. Подиктовано е протестом. Было продиктовано протестом. На знак несправедливой политики. В знак несправедливой политики. Проводзоне во обед Беларуси. Которую проводят против Беларуси. И России. И против России. Хотел бы запросить медиа. Я бы также хотел пригласить СМИ. Dla własnego bezpieczeństwa. Dla sobstwnej bezpieczeństwa. I żebyście państwo zobaczyli to wydarzenie. Mogli uwiedzieć te sabycie. Some agent, by the way, didn't even learn to speak Russian. What is he going to do while in Belarus? Walk Lukashenko's fluffy little dog, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, on the 9th of May, Russia will celebrate its Victory Day. And we all know that it's a very important day for Moscow. Remember all of these big parades in Red Square with Putin and company trying to shock and awe the world with Russia's military power? And the holiday also sees the Kremlin's propaganda machine shift into overdrive, trying to flood the zone with messaging showing Russia's supposed greatness. Supposed being the operative term here. Let's take a look at Russian kids treating the oh-so-important eternal flame with the proper respect, shall we? I'm not sure these kids understand what they did. To them, it's just a joke, a prank. So hey, Russian propagandists, it seems that you have your work cut out for you. So get to it, no? Uh, talking about absurd things, President Emmanuel Macron, speaking at a joint briefing with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Paris, said that France has no desire to go to war with the people of Russia, which is kind of understandable, and that France has no desire to change the regime in Moscow, which is not. Les autorités chinoises l'ont rappelé à plusieurs reprises et je veux ici vous en remercier. Ensuite, nous avons voulu ce matin expliquer l'impact de ce conflit sur la sécurité européenne et notre détermination à soutenir l'Ukraine aussi longtemps et autant que nécessaire. Sans sécurité pour l'Ukraine, il ne peut y avoir de sécurité de l'Europe. Pour autant, nous ne sommes en guerre ni contre la Russie ni contre le peuple russe et nous n'avons pas non plus une approche consistant à rechercher un changement de régime à Moscou. Il ne faut pas là inverser les rôles. Macron also said that the conflict in Ukraine has deeply affected European security, but that the bloc is determined to support Ukraine for as long as as much as necessary. Can you feel the vibe? It's like Macron's stepping away from his big, strong player shtick we saw a couple of weeks back. Well, we are helping Ukraine, but it's not like we want to see regime change in Moscow. It's like trying to have your baguette and eat it too, isn't it? And I know it's not very diplomatic to say we want regime change, bringing back images of, say, Saddam Hussein, but don't we all secretly dream of it? Those of us not doing business with the Kremlin, that is. And since we're already on the subject of Macron's teeter-tottering, we need to show you one more thing. Frightened, apparently, by his own words, Macron has said that there are no French soldiers in the ranks of the Ukrainian armed forces. However, a clip has surfaced that suggests otherwise. Look, here is the thing. The footage was shot by Russians, right? And it's not like they are strangers to deception. A body clad in some boots or wearing specific chevrons, typical of other countries, in no way proves that it belongs to an expired NATO soldier. <laughs> Well, that was fast. 
How is that for evidence? Anyway, Russian occupiers are telling us that they found the dead French soldiers near Bilohorivka in Ukraine. But remember, Russian propaganda loves to repeat the claim that there are a lot of foreign mercenaries in the Ukrainian army. Is it actually true, though? We guess we all know who the inveterate professional liars are in this story. Remember how Russia supposedly destroyed more HIMARS launchers than Ukraine ever had on its soil? Remember how the Moskva attack never happened? Then, how the ship was slightly damaged? And finally, how it was lost at sea after it became clear that it was impossible to deny the facts? Well, the facts, yeah, that's the crucial point here, the facts. The instant casualty of any meeting with Russian propaganda. Some things never change. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates. I'm Ilana Shalevinsky. Bye for now.